What's up, Mac Kids, Maniacs? What's up, YouTube? Today, I want to dive into something regarding the last video I made about the show lines and the 60s back in 2008. Shout out to Alfie. Alfie corrected me on some information. And shout out to Baby Smack for providing these pictures. Shout out to Cisco. Good interview. <laughs> That's the new gym, but it was the old gym. This is what we had our crypt meetings at. This is where the Venice Shoreline Crips first got started at. Right here in the bleaches when we named the set. For sure. What year? 1972. Welcome to another episode of Cain Videos, True Stories. I never stopped, I never stopped banging, I, I started banging hard, then I got so hard, till it was a shame. <laughs> Welcome to another episode of KM Video, True, 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 True Stories. So back in 2008, when the word around the 60s was we about the peace treaty with the Venice Shorelines. The word peace treaty is like a trigger word. It makes gang members feel uncomfortable. It gets them upset. Not a whole lot of people like that term. Even back in 1992, when the term became very popular, that didn't work out with everybody for one reason or another or another. It didn't work out. So people always resort back to 92. They have these 92 stores, whether they were there or not there, right? It's just that word peace treaty that gets people all up in a frenzy. But if you say we're going to sit down with this set, it sounds a little better, right? People tend to think peace is weak. Cease fire, I got to put my gun up. Uh, you know, I, I don't have that fall back with my pistol no more. No, that ain't what it is. It's just saving lives, man, and being able to go outside your perimeters of your community and still be safe. You don't have to lose your life, and you don't have to take nobody's life when they get caught on the borders of your neighborhood or coming to see a female in your hood. But anyway, on to the story. So in 2008, the big homie Slip Rock, Slip Rock was going through some health complications from diabetes. And Slip was now confined to a wheelchair. This was new and ongoing with Slip at the time. Slip, rock, 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 had this rider named Lil Scooby. Lil Scooby was a rider. Squabbling through YA, came home, made his way up the ranks, pushing the line, had a lot of youngsters behind him. Very argumentative, would challenge the authority or those that been around pushing the line from the set. So Scooby was making his way up and was respected by many, feared by some. And so he, he had a name for himself. He made his name in the hood. Everybody knew him. 
He was in all over the hood, participated in all the functions. And so when Scooby get the news, Scooby just, he go on one, oh, I ain't with it, I ain't with it. And he gets to using derogatory terms and all that. And everybody's looking at him like, what's his problem? Like, Scooby, is, he's tripping. But he got youngsters looking up to him, so the youngsters is trying to figure out do they follow behind Scooby or do they follow behind the older homies, right? And so to not agree with peace or want to talk about it's normal. That's why I keep saying ain't nobody mad at no youngsters that ain't, ain't with something. or Nobody's telling the youngsters that it's only one way, right? But whenever you're trying to do something, whenever you're trying to establish something, whenever you're trying to push a line, you don't start at the bottom. You don't start at the where dudes just came from the hood or dudes ain't been around that long or dudes ain't really that reputable. You don't start down there at the bottom. You start with the guys that's pushing a line or giving out orders, basically. Dudes that got longevity in this. Dudes that didn't prove themselves. Dudes that's solid in this. You start there. You start at where the dudes that already proved on the street and in prison or one or the other that they all of that and they represent your set in great fashion. So we got this back and forth between Scooby now, Slip Rock and, you know, everybody with and behind Slip Rock. But Slip Rock tells Scooby, cuz, if you ain't with it, just don't show up. Just don't show up. Just don't go to the game. Because of the baseball game we was hearing about. Scooby's still on one. All the way up into game day. So on game day, when we go to the park, to play the show lines, Scooby shows up. And Scooby got his strings from his tennis shoes around his neck. He got blue strings, white strings. That was his way of showing disrespect and not being unified with the set. And I remember Slip Rock told him, like, Cub, get out of here, Cub. Cub. Scooby's coming in. And he's going toward the infield where everybody's at. And Slip Rock stopped him like, nah, cuz, like, get out of here, cuz. You're not finna mess this up. Eventually, Scooby enjoyed the game and Scooby accepted that the show lines in the 60s put their past beast behind. So the reason why I say this is because people that ain't with it, with whatever set it is, that you don't want to get along with, if you don't want to get along with all Crips or most Crips, however you feel is how you feel. That don't mean you still going to feel that way next week or next month. And I was thinking, wouldn't it be a tragedy? Wouldn't it be tragic if one of us, old, young, middle-aged, whatever, didn't want to get along with a particular set, didn't want to put our past beefs to the side, and then we end up getting killed? By either that set, that would be ironic if that set kills you, like you lose your life because you didn't want to get along with another set. But let's say I die or, or we die, we get killed or just die of natural causes. Now we gone. We ain't here no more on earth. So we have no opinions and no influence any longer. And then your set is still beefing with this set. Now, dudes are still getting killed, and you're not even around to feel bad about it. You're not even around to retaliate. You're not around to attend the homie's funeral. You're not around to help his kids or his family bury your homeboy, your loved one. So that's another thought, man. Think beyond yourself. Don't be so selfish. Don't be so egotistical. That you're only thinking about yourself and you're not thinking of others. Big Slip Rock died in 2009 and Lil Scooby was killed around 2014. Somebody asked me, so how's the youngster supposed to feel when his family member or his host, close homeboy just got killed? Well, there's several ways that a person can feel. Number one, 
Yeah, you're supposed to feel it. That's what you're supposed to do. So if you're not with it, I understand that. But you can also look at it like, y'all keep warm, you're going to lose more homeboys than just that one, or more brothers than just the brother that you lost. Because ongoing war is going to cause more deaths. So you can look at it that way, or, or the way I always approach it, maturity, man. Maturity, just learning, being safe, safe, being able to live out your life the way it was meant for us to live out, like our older parents or grandparents did. You didn't have to worry about no gang banging and getting killed by a rival or getting caught out of bounds and nothing like that. All they cared about was providing for their family and maybe getting arrested or harassed by the police. We got so much to worry about nowadays, man. I, I'm not here to preach to y'all. I'm sorry if I start preaching. I'm just passionate about cripping and about my blackness that I believe there is a way for everybody, man. You know, you, you may need to have some discussions and some conversations with your older homies or your younger homies or your parents to get a better understanding of why peace is good or why stop killing your brothers because of the area they live in for the set they claim. It's a much better option. But again, man, I, I can't stress this enough, man. Because a lot of us are hypocritical. We're hypocritical, you know what I mean? But a youngster will be the biggest hypocrite if he doesn't want to stop killing his so-called rival gang members and he ends up in prison, call your homeboy, talk to your homeboys in prison, ask them. You end up on a tier with your enemy, the same set to kill your brother or your homeboy, and you're going to get along with him. Because if you won't get along with them, you're going to stab them or whatever. You're going to stay in the shoe. So you're going to be irrelevant. You're going to be obsolete anyway. If you're on the street, and what's stopping you from going over there, getting your man right now? You don't want to get your man. You really want peace. You just don't want to look weak. With that said, I'm out of here, y'all, man. Shout out to Alfie, Bone, Draws. Shout out to everybody, D-Mac, that bought these two sets together to where we don't beef no more, man. There's no animosity. There's no disrespect. There's no crossing each other out on walls. You know what I mean? A lot of show lines. I didn't mention this last time, but a lot of show lines was living in the hood, had businesses in the hood, coming through the hood, all of that, man. So uh, I personally am of the belief that that was a beautiful thing, and it can be more beautiful. If you reach out to more sets that you don't get along with and do the same same thing that we did with the show lines, man. Just call it off. Call the beef off. Just call the beef off. Don't that sound better? Call the beef off. No more beefing with this set. Don't that sound a lot better than peace treaty? But again, if there's peace or a ceasefire, that doesn't make you look weak. And there are a lot of gangs within L.A. County, particularly the city, that have been talking, meeting, getting on the phone, you know what I mean, and trying to work things out. So this is something that's going on, man. This is like a virus that's going along throughout the county, and dudes are talking about ways to move forward without war. Just give you something to think about, and I'm going to say this last thing, too. It's not easy to stop a war. Nobody said it would be easy. No old dude, no young dude, no, no in the middle have I ever heard say it would be easy. It is a difficult task, most certainly, but it's starting to work. It's starting to work. Whether your set is the last one to call peace or almost one of the last sets to call peace, it's starting to happen. And it's not going to be long before it reaches your set. And that's a good thing for everybody, especially the innocent women and children that be getting killed because somebody want to do a drive-by and don't get their man. It's going to be beautiful for the city, man. I'm out of here, y'all. Be sure to click that like button. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe. I tell all sorts of stories here. I even give some lectures sometimes. But 
I salute you all for watching. I'm out of here. Salute.